Hi gang, today I'm going to show you how to make a very clever different fold. I'm calling this the Dutch door gatefold card. A lot of us have made gatefold cards before, but there's just a simple addition to adding two front panels, one on the right side, one on the left side, as your card opens up and reveals your message on the inside. It's really clever. It's just something maybe that your friends haven't seen before. So if you are looking for a new, different idea, try the Dutch door gatefold card. It's super simple. And I want to thank my friend Carrie for introducing me to this card idea on Pinterest. Thanks Carrie. I think it is a terrific idea. These are the cards that my stamp club made for July. We used a very, very cool new stamp set in our July, August, September catalog called Writing in the Sand. Check this out. I've never seen anything like this before. This stamp set, oh, it's kind of upside down. These are the ocean waves and this is the sand part and they're made to fit together and then you have these messages that look like writing in the sand. So the stamp set is called writing in the sand. When you open up this card, ah, oh, isn't that cool? Look, if it's some dog hair fuzzies, <laughs> par for the course in this house. But I just love, love, love that stamp. I think it is so clever. So let me show you how these are going to come together. The card bases are going to be a standard eight and a half by 11 cut in half. So it's eight and a half by five and a half. I'm going to score both of these cards at the same time. So we have our bases ready. It's going to be two and one eighth. Spin it around two and one eighth. Here's my little cheat sheet here. Eight and a half by five and a half, score two and one eighth on either side. Our cards, the color cardstock is two toned, a lighter side and a darker side. It doesn't really matter for this, but typically I have the darker side facing out. So when you press that with your bone folder, they should meet up right smack in the middle if you scored correctly. Let's try that again with the white. Two and one eighth. This trimmer has sixteenth inch increments, so it's not two and one sixteenth, it's two and one eighth. And for those of you who don't like to measure, it's the hash mark between <laughs> two and two and a quarter. Two and one eighth. Give that a smash. And we're ready to stamp and decorate. Alrighty. Well, let's let's do the writing in the sand since I love that so much. Let's start with that and do the stamping. I'm going to use a couple different inks here. For the water, I'm going to use Lagoon and Sapphire. And for the sand is going to be shortbread and toffee. With the Lagoon ink, I'm going to ink up the entire surface. And because it's a large stamp, I'm turning it upside down and just bringing my ink pad to it. Give it a good press in the middle so the center comes out. And you can see how we've been adding sapphire on the edges because the stamp itself is stained. And I didn't clean it off from our stamp club because I was still using it. But Lagoon across the whole surface and then you're going to take the sapphire look at I'm still using one of our oldie but goodie ink pads how they swizzle around like that and you're going to just press the sapphire on the upper part I'm going to stand up hold this by the corners and actually I'm going to move this away so my eyeballs can see it better I want a white border around the edges and then stand up, give some good pressure there. 
All right, so my middle didn't quite come out the way I like it, so guess what? Part two, I'm gonna try this again. And I'm a stand-up stamper. When I'm crafting, I'm always standing, and that gives me better leverage. So make sure we get that all nice and inky. Little sapphire at the top part. And let's see what take two will look like. You just need a little bit more pressure. Well, it's okay. We're going to take it. Of course, it's handmade. It's not absolutely perfect. And I'm okay with that. I'm not a perfectionist. You know, when it comes to crafting, I think that stresses people out way too much when you are a perfectionist. So try to let that go. Taffy on the bottom edge of the sand. And we're gonna line this up as best we can. And there's your sand. Love it. And the words, we're going to use toffee for the words. I'm going to use, hello. Right there in the sand. Isn't that cool? I just love the way that looks. Really love the way that looks. And this center portion that didn't quite come out right, it almost, looks like a sun glare off of the ocean waves, right? So we can say, we wanted it to look that way, right? No worries. All right, now some assembly required. What I'm going to do next is glue this onto a piece of peach cardstock. I kind of like this color combination of the sapphire blue with uh, the peach and Lagoon. I think it's a pretty combination. So this will have a nice even border. And we're going to put that onto the inside. So when we open up our card, this is going to get layered right onto the inside. So that inside piece works out to be four and a quarter by five and a half, your standard size card. And that is in the middle. I just love that. So you reveal this really cool beach scene on the inside. Love it. Okay, other pieces that we're going to use here. I pulled out in my stash some old pattern paper from a summer kit from a couple years ago that looks kind of like distressed. It's kind of like wood grain, but that bluish grayish color. Layered that on some peach. And then these two peach pieces I have embossed, the seashell embossing folder that came out last year. And we're going to layer that onto some Lagoon cardstock. So these base pieces, let me show you, we want four by two and three eighths. We want two pieces, and those are gonna be the, the doors. And then for the, uh, the gatefold, the panels here, this is two by five and three eighths, and you want two of those. So your layering pieces are gonna be an eighth inch smaller. Before we glue this down, we're going to pull out an old fashioned sandpaper block. I embossed this peach cardstock and I'm going to sandpaper the raised parts. And that reveals the white core cardstock in the middle, which I think is a very cool look, especially with these seashells.
You can do this with any embossing folder with our cardstock. That white core is going to show through. I think it's such a cool look, especially with what we're going for here, this distressed beachy effect. So the peach is just an eighth inch smaller, so we're going to have a border of lagoon showing on all four sides there. And layer this. So the card comes together very simply. You just score two and one eighth on both sides and then create your panels and we're going to glue them down easy peasy simple idea but something you haven't quite seen before a new style for the recipient and again these tall panels are two by five and three eighths you could open up your card and do one half at a time. This is going to have a sliver of a sapphire border, so it highlights that peachy color real nice. I'm using Nuvo white glue. I, I got to be a big fan of this white glue and check this out. I found this at a scrapbook store out in Phoenix when I was with my buddy Carol and uh, one of the guys in the shop makes these with a 3D printer. It it holds your glue. Well, you would put the cap on and you can you can store it that way so that your glue is not clogging up. Isn't that cool? A little glue bottle holder. Love it. All right, other half. Almost done with this one. All righty, so let's close it up. There's our little panels, our gatefold panels. Now these pieces, you can lay this down without glue first, just to get your placement. I like to look at the top, the center, and the bottom. I would like to see an even spacing. I want to see an even spacing at the top, in the middle, and at the bottom. So get your placement without glue first. Know where you want to put it. And then I'm going to just put my finger here kind of at the halfway mark so I know not to put glue on that other half. You can use red line adhesive tape. Doesn't matter. Right about there. Give that a press. All right, so now this bottom panel, I'm going to put my finger here at the middle point and I'm going to glue on this side. that down all right I'm happy with that and then we have a message from that writing in the sand I stamped thinking of you on a piece of white layered it onto lagoon did the dove dovetail here you can use 3d foam tape if you want but I'm just gluing this flat down on the bottom here And I took this embossing folder and I ran it through some uh, shortbread cardstock. Let me show you a piece here. I sandpapered it and then I cut out some individual seashells. And you can use these as dimensional accents on your card there. I've got a tiny little starfish here too. And we'll add him there. 
All right, so there is card number one. I love that. Embossing some seashells, Dutch door, gatefold, and this awesome, awesome stamp set in the middle, writing in the sand. Love it. All right, so let's go to card number two, watermelons. It's summertime. I wanted to create a kind of a happy summer card with the watermelons, and we're going to use Distress Oxide inks for this. We're going to use Picked Raspberry and Mowed Lawn. And two pieces of white cardstock with our little sponge tips here. Love these. They are Velcro, so you can switch them out. So I keep one for each color in a quart size Ziploc baggie. All right, let me do the picked raspberry first. I'll show you what I did here. You're going to swirl this over the ink pad and then brush it down like three quarters of the way. You can do a little circular swirl, but I want it a heavier at the top and then brush it down, but not all the way. So about like that. Swirl, brush down, heavier at the top, fade it out towards the bottom, but not all the way. I'm happy with that. And the mowed lawn, what I'm going to do is just flip this around to the other side, swirl it on the ink pad, and then just the edge brush down heavier on the outside edge and brush now when you eat a watermelon it does have that white edge in the rind so you want to that's why i'm creating that white space there just leave a little bit of room for it to look like a real watermelon rind isn't that cute? You can do all kinds of cool backgrounds with this watermelon idea. All right, I am happy with that. So for the seeds, what I did with that is I picked up a tiny little heart, itty bit of little heart. And you can find, just go through your stamps. I happened to find this one in this, this stamp set that came out oh, probably a good year ago. A little heart there. So look in your stash, see what you find. And I'm going to stamp some black hearts. Doesn't have to be even. And these are going to be our little watermelon seeds. And cute just like that and I die cut a bracket stamped your sweet and we're gonna add a little heart in the bottom there uh, let me come back to our cardstock base we're not quite done with this here yet when you while we have these distress oxide inks and the sponges you're gonna open up your card Take a little bit of that picked raspberry and just lightly swirl in the middle. I just want to create, you can do a little back and forth and up and down, a circle. doesn't matter. I'm just laying down a little bit of color with that picked raspberry. And shopped my stash and found another message. Thanks a bunch. And I'm going to put that right in the middle and come back to that little tiny black heart and add a few on the inside just so that there's a cute little message when you open up your card. All right, now we're ready to layer everything together. With this, my panels, the two inch by five and three eighths is raspberry. And then my layering piece is green apple cardstock that I ran through an embossing folder. 
one of my favorites. I forget what it was called, but I love those little stitch lines. So shop your stash. What kind of embossing folder would you like for a little summertime watermelon card? Lots of flexibility there. So if my raspberry panels are two by five and three eighths, my green apple is one and seven eighths by five and a quarter. Eighth inch smaller. Layer these onto the front panels. So now we're going to have a nice white border. Love the way that looks. It's nice and bright and cheery. Other side. Just looking at that white edge. Try to make it uniform. All right, so when you close your card, look at that. Beautiful. Perfect. That's what I'm going for. All right, two and three eighths by four is the raspberry. I layered that with white because when we sponge these and glue these down, so this is an eighth inch smaller yet, I had a white border and I really, really like the way that looked as opposed to just using raspberry and gluing it onto the raspberry. You know, look at, look at what a difference that makes. So just a white inch, white, a white inch. <laughs> a white border as opposed to without makes a big difference i thought it made it really pop so we'll layer those down and we're almost done it's coming together real simply I hope you guys are inspired to make this style card, the Dutch door gatefold. I would love to see what you come up with. All right, again, I'm gonna look at top, middle, and bottom to get my placement. I want it evenly spaced. So again, I'm going to put my finger in the middle, put my glue over here, layer that, and find my middle, put the glue on this half. Alrighty, and then that bracket that I used with a die cut, I'm going to just glue this onto the bottom panel. And I pulled out some good old fashioned gingham ribbon from back in the day. Love, love, love. And to adhere ribbons, Glue dots are your best friend for that. So come to, come to a roll of glue dots, put your item to the glue dot, lift it off, and you see I stamped that towards the bottom to leave room for our ribbon at the top. And there you have it, watermelon, Dutch door, gatefold. Alrighty guys, thanks for joining me today. Again, I hope you feel inspired to create some Dutch door gatefold cards on your own. And please like this video, share it, uh, make a comment if you like, and post your idea. Thanks for joining me. Bye.